Welcome to the Rise Above Project. I'm your host, Joe Peroni. I am a licensed marriage and family therapist, champion bodybuilder, and I've been a personal trainer for about 30 years. This podcast is about helping people with their emotional, spiritual, and physical fitness. I value strength, toughness, and truth. I despise complacency, the victim mentality, and following the herd. If you find my work to be valuable, please subscribe to my channel and tell a friend. Today's show is going to be about creating a screening process to find a lifelong partner. So this is part two. So let's assume that you have listened to the last show and have been working on the 17 questions that I gave you. If you did, you will have improved your personal psychology, started processing your childhood traumas, and dropped many of your grudges and resentments. Now it's time to share your authentic self and meaningful life with the worthy partner. And now that you can mostly trust your decisions, knowing that they are based on strength and not weakness, it's time to develop a strong screening process to narrow down the field for you. If you wanna be happy in a long-term relationship, I'll give you the most simple, most foolproof way to maximize your chances. Choose a partner who is already happy, has an optimistic view of life, and has a high degree of life satisfaction. And as ridiculous and oversimplified as that advice might be, it is actually supported by empirical evidence. According to the Journal of Psychological Science, the higher the life satisfaction of a partner, the lower the mortality rate and the higher the life satisfaction of their partner, no matter what their socioeconomic, demographic, or physical status is. Your partner's demeanor is a big contributor to the quality of your relationship, and relationships largely decide the quality of your life. Most people falsely believe that the attraction they have toward another person is all about their partner, but it's much more narcissistic than that. People fall or grow in love with how they feel and who they become while in the presence of another person. If you smile, laugh, and share more than usual with someone, it is because they are creating an environment for you to shine. And they need to get credit for this because it's a good quality. But don't forget that they can't bring out those qualities unless they already exist within you. It is important to be comfortable with a potential partner. Usually this feeling is cultivated by being with a partner who is non-judgmental, empathetic, and spends more time listening than talking. Some people tend to dominate conversations and don't make an effort to understand another person's point of view. This can be self-serving in a conscious or an unconscious attempt to make other people think that they are important and powerful. But people who ask questions, listen to the answers, and who give their time and attention make other people feel important. So it's the difference between a potential partner walking into a room with the attitude of, here I am, as opposed to, there you are. The important question is, how do you feel when you are with this person? The best bet for a long-term partner is the one who you can be yourself with, feel respected, and the person who supports your personal growth. If at any time you have difficulty choosing the right partner, you must go back and do an inventory on yourself. In weak moments, it may be difficult to trust your own feelings. And this is because many people have a gravitational pull toward choosing those who treat us in familiar ways, which may have been destructive, rather than those who treat us with the proper love and care that we deserve. With awareness, you will be able to destroy the familiar destructive dynamics of your past and create new pathways. The Big Five personality traits has a significant predictive association with romantic life, including marital success and satisfaction. The Big Five personality traits are a scientifically supported theory in which each trait can predict a person's typical behavior in different situations over time. Let's take a look at each trait 
and see what the evidence may suggest if your potential partner has that trait. Number one on the list, neuroticism. That's not eroticism, that's neuroticism with an N. People who score high on the neuroticism scale are anxious, highly reactive to stress, volatile, and are prone to experiencing negative emotions. Neuroticism is the trait that most strongly predicts your relationship destiny, but it's for the worse. Many empirical studies suggest the neuroticism of one partner is all it takes to create dissatisfaction for both partners. High neuroticism is correlated with low resilience, which may turn small disagreements into big disagreements and big disagreements into breakups and divorces, or maybe worse. The emotional reactivity of one partner may cause PTSD symptoms in the other partner due to having to be hypervigilant in an unpredictable environment. Highly neurotic people, such as those with borderline personality disorder, are generally considered to be more sexual. They tend to choose sex as a way to relieve their feelings of insecurity, which eternally plague them. Although this may temporarily make them exciting or interesting, they nonetheless don't fare well in long-term relationships. Famous suspected borderlines are people like Marilyn Monroe, Angelina Jolie, and Jim Morrison. Overall, neuroticism lowers sexual satisfaction due to the individual being prone to negative affect, negative expectations, instability, jealousy, lack of trust, and rages, all of which decrease satisfaction for both partners in and out of the bedroom. If you choose a partner who scores high on the scale of neuroticism, then you are increasing your chances of having to deal with substance abuse, emotional abuse, and physical abuse. If you are screening people to determine if they have potential to be a lifelong partner, it is prudent to walk away from a neurotic individual and don't expect them to change. Many neurotic people have difficulty changing because they have difficulty with criticism. They see criticism or a partner's appropriate boundaries as an attack on their ego and personhood. Therefore, their automatic response is to fight back, to deny, and to defend, rather than having productive reciprocal conflict resolutions. If you are looking for long-term happiness with your partner, it is your responsibility to diligently screen for lapses in emotional dysregulation and look for someone who's emotionally stable and confident. To be clear, a person who scores high in eroticism is not a good candidate for a long-term relationship, probably not for a short-term relationship as well. If you are choosing a partner like this, then you are repeating old destructive dynamics and you need to correct your course. Healthy people don't choose to be abused by others. The combination of conscientiousness and agreeableness is most desirable when seeking a lifelong partner. People who score high on conscientiousness tend to be responsible, aim for achievement, take obligations very seriously, and are reliable. In short, they are usually described as having character and integrity. People who are too high on the conscientiousness scale can be workaholics, conformists, and may lack spontaneity. But evidence suggests that this is a relatively low price to pay when considering the alternative, which may be laziness, irresponsibility, and carelessness. But you'll have to decide that one for yourself. A person who rates high on agreeableness is usually warm, friendly, tactful, and gets along well with others. This type of person values social harmony and is willing to compromise and collaborate with their partner. Dr. John Gottman is considered to be one of the leading marriage and family therapy experts in the world. He is known for being able to predict if a couple will divorce with over 90% accuracy. One of the most important metrics he utilizes is the five to one rule. He states that in order for couples to stay together, 
and to be happy, the ratio of positive interactions to negative interactions must be greater than 5 to 1. To be in the range of a 5 to 1 ratio, you must make a conscious effort to always treat your partner with care. If you do hurt your partner, it isn't enough to be sorry. One must be clear as to why and what they are sorry for. It's also important to seek forgiveness to decrease the impact of the negative action and to erase resentments which may stand in the way of future intimacy and trust. Screening a potential partner for a high level of conscientiousness and agreeableness is important because they will most likely have the personality traits needed to have a relationship where the five to one model is relatively easy to maintain. A published study of 20,000 couples, and that's a lot, found that high conscientiousness, high agreeableness, and low neuroticism in one spouse predict satisfaction in the relationship. Some people are attracted to those who score lower on conscientiousness and agreeableness. These antisocial traits can be attractive to some because some people see these traits as examples of rebels, fun bad boy types, and those who tell it like they see it. However, it's important to note that low agreeableness and low conscientiousness highly correlates to infidelity, casual sex with strangers, unprotected sex, and having a large number of partners. Evidence suggests someone like this might be a good candidate to go to Coachella for the weekend, but if you want a lifetime partner, you should probably run the other way. Again, if you are considering a partner like this for the long term, you are looking for negative psychodynamics that are familiar at the expense of breaking your legacy and allowing love into your life. And you know that you deserve better, so choose wisely. The trait of extroversion is a double-edged sword. Extroverts tend to be socially connected, happier, and more charismatic than introverts. They tend to be better skilled at relationships, but they can also undermine those relationships due to their adventurous side. A 2008 study with 13,000 participants from 46 different countries found high extroversion to be positively correlated with interest in short-term mating, unrestricted sociosexuality, and less interest in monogamy. High extroversion and low conscientiousness in men predicts lower marital satisfaction and a higher percentage of divorce, of course. A person who rates high on the openness to experience scale may have more creativity and curiosity, but studies suggest openness has only a very minimal positive effect in romantic relationships. The Hexaco personality inventory is similar to the five-factor model, but it adds one very important domain. And this domain is the honesty and humility domain, which it helps predict traits such as narcissism and manipulation. People who rate high on the honesty humility scale tend to be sincere, modest, are not entitled, feel little to no inclination to break rules, and are very genuine. People who score low on this scale flatter or pretend to like other people for personal profit are motivated by materialism and have a strong sense of self-importance. They are more loyal to themselves than they will ever be to a group or to a partnership. To make matters worse, they can be predicted to have the dark triad of personality traits, which include narcissism, psychopathy, and Machiavellianism. A healthy, independent person who has been working on their soul would not consider a person low on the honesty, humility scale to be a worthy partner. It's possible to be fooled by a person motivated by money, entitlement, and self-importance because they may seem powerful and in control. However, this show of arrogance isn't much more than what Peter Townsend from The Who would describe as being an eminence front basically superficial and fake. Many people are naturally drawn to those who have strengths that they perceive themselves as missing. 
An attraction to someone with an opposite personality type may be seen as an unconscious attempt to have someone else make up for their deficiencies. Thereby, both partners gain a fraudulent sense of completion. On a personal note, in my past, I was painfully shy, which unconsciously led me to be attracted to overly gregarious and open to experience women. Conversely, overly extroverted, low conscientious women were attracted to my stoicism and my stability. And as you might guess, both scenarios were an abysmal failure and never would have happened if all the parties involved felt lovable and whole on their own. Thereby, they wouldn't be compelled to use another human being to complete their life's jigsaw puzzle. With some work and a lot of maturity, people on the opposite ends of the spectrum can have successful relationships. However, empirical evidence suggests that most people in successful relationships do find partners who share common interests, common perspectives, and are considered to be on the same wavelength. In screening for a potential lifelong partner, it is important to see the red flags while dating and not fall into the trap of being a people pleaser and feeling guilty for flexing your new discernment skills. If you were taught that judging others is wrong, then I would invite you to consider that you are not judging. You are just merely making an appropriate assessment for your life. So this ends part two. Next in the series, I wanna offer some information on do's and don'ts of dating in the year 2019. So I am Joe Peroni from the Rise Above Project. Please subscribe and tell a friend. Thank you.